Warm heart, that's what we've got to say. <laughs> but you're all alright. Should I cups of tea for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Joe. Hello, this is Joe. Hello, this is Joe. Hello, this is Joe. Thank you. 
конечно. May I extend a warm welcome to you from our UK Parliament. We are honoured and feel extremely privileged to have you here today with us. And I hope you know... It is only nine months since the second invasion of your homeland by Russia. An act of aggression that shocked and appalled us all, but nine months is a long time. While the UK continues to offer help, supplying military hardware and training to thousands of UK troops, offering homes to your displaced people, and even an unprecedented platform video link for your husband, President Zelensky, to talk to our members in the House of Commons in the chamber. It is easy for those of us who live in peace to not want to think about what you are going through. When there is no end in sight, people suffer news fatigue. But just as we must not forget the Holocaust, we cannot deny that is happening again. We must not sleepwalk into thinking that this situation is, is going on in a faraway land, that it does not affect us. So your brave visit with us today must shock us awake again. You must make us listen when you say that Ukraine women are being raped by Russian soldiers and that the people's lives are being destroyed, children are being murdered, homes are being destroyed. You must make us listen. After all, we are you and you are us. We cannot imagine what is happening to you, but how we would feel if this happened to us. You need to keep going and we need to keep supporting you. Because if Putin wins, other nations will be in his sights. Myself and colleagues, many of whom are sanctioned by Russia, raise your plight at every opportunity. In discussions about food, energy security and the rights of women and girls at the recent G20 Speakers Conference in Jakarta, I was vehement in my attack on Russia about the rights and your sovereign rights. And I've got to say, I refuse to sign any communique that did not acknowledge Russia as the aggressor. I made no friends, and I'm proud of that. <laughs> so let us, in the UK, be your continued voice that your story, your liberality of being invaded does not disappear. It is our duty to keep the spotlight on you to keep shaking the world away to the horrors Russia is committing. I know, First Lady Zelenska, it's not been easy for you or your family being separated during this awful war. We know the sacrifices that you have made to spread the message of peace and to keep your family safe. So for you to join us today takes a level of bravery, which is a hallmark of your president, of your parliament, and the Ukraine people. That, and I say, I thank you for being here today. And please, First Lady Zelensky, the floor is yours. Thank you.
corner. I stopped being a child and came face to face with the new reality of the world. End of quote. Це враження 15-річного підлітка. Це враження 15-річного підлітка. Українця? Ні, це хлопець з лондонського вестенду. Він сказав це про події, які відбулись понад 80 років тому. І саме такими є зараз відчуття українців. Хлопців і дівчат з Києва. Чоловіків і жінок з Дніпра, Харкова, Запоріжжя. Вінниці, Львова, Коріжжя, Вінниця, Львів, Кривий Ріг, Одеса і Чернігов. Дозенс і дозенс українських міст, які сутті атаку російських блиц. Дякую, 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 мемберів парламенту, Government, my lords, and the great nation of Great Britain. Ukrainians are now going through the terror which will resonate with you. Your island survived the air raids, which were identical to those that Russia uses now to put us on our knees. We're hearing sirens every day, the identical to those which were heard by the Brit British generations, you did not surrender, and we will not surrender. But victory is not the only thing we need. We need justice. I came to you for justice, because justice will lead to the end of this war, just as it led to the end of the previous war. It was impossible to imagine that after all the crimes of the Nazi criminals, the, the Nazis will remain unpunished. It was impossible to imagine that the Londoners and the inhabitants of Coventry, Liverpool, Birmingham, Manchester or Sheffield would uh, indeed accept that those aggressors would avoid the courts and not be accountable for the terror. We are imagining the same. We, we imagine that we have to do the same. And we need justice for our people who suffer from the missiles. As the Nazis assembled hundreds of aircrafts to turn into horror the British days and nights, Russia is doing the same with missiles and drones, Iranian drones, for the mass missiles attacks. 70, even 100 missiles a day, and those cities who are on the front line survive the lethal strikes. Have a look what it means. This is the hospital in Vilnyansk, in Zaporizhia region. We had the maternity unit there. Russian missile attack destroyed everything. 13 people uh, managed, we managed to save, but one newly born boy who was only two days old was killed. The next photograph was shared by thousands of people. The parents of these children had to find the gas station so that they could find the electricity, the power supply for her inhaler. She couldn't survive without it. That was during the blackout. During yet another mass Russian missile strike, more than 20 million Ukrainians remained without electricity, water, heat. They had no electricity in for over 30 hours in some places. This is how it looked. The doctors were operating in the dark, and the transport stopped and communication. Our enemy wants to destroy the rush of the energy and hit us with the darkness and cold. We do not know exactly how many boys and girls and women and men became the victims of torture and violence brought by the Russian occupiers. But it's important to understand that Russia brought the systematic violence. In many deoccupied towns and villages, we find the chambers, torture chambers, which were organized by the occupiers. We have documented thousands of crimes, including the sexual violence. The youngest girl who was raped by the Russian occupiers was four years old. The oldest survivor was 85. These are the victims we know. How many victims we still don't know about? These 
are the burnt blocks of apartment blocks in Kherson. Russian army is hitting Kherson dozens of times a week, planned cruel, uh, cruel attacks, and they are uh, attacking men, women, buildings, schools, and hospitals, which would have been impossible uh, without the orders of the senior of the leaders of the terrorist state in the five days in five days in Kherson last week 15 people were killed and this is another threat to the millions of Ukrainians we are talking about the mines over 200,000 kilometers of our soil are now covered in mines and unexploded munitions when the occupiers retreat, they are leaving everything around the mine. Quite often, they are hiding the mines and the explosive devices so that it would be difficult to find them straight away in the buildings, in the civilian cars, in the critical infrastructure. For example, in one of the flats in the Kyiv region, they mined the piano that sums it up, their attitude, not just to people, but to art as well. This is not spontaneous or random mining. This is a criminal policy of the Russian state, the element of aggression and the attempt to damage and premeditatedly kill as many people as possible. And these are just some examples of the countless number of crimes, not just from the 24th of February this year, but also from 2014, when Russia attacked Ukrainian Crimea and seized it and started the hybrid war in Donbas. All these crimes against Ukrainians and humanity are born from one primary, primary crime, that is the crime of aggression of Russia against Ukraine. And, you, and Russia has to be responsible for this. Therefore, I'm addressing you, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I'm addressing the United Kingdom. 80 years ago in London, not far from this place where we are now, in the St. James Palace, the document was signed which helped to define history. The war was still going on, and nobody knew what was going to happen. But on the 13th of January, 1942, the declaration was signed, which recorded the will to make accountable those who were the perpetrators in the war crimes, crimes against humanity and peace. That became the basis of the Nuremberg. That's how, that's the way it looked. The declaration which was recorded and signed by the future victors, they've signed, resolved to see to it in a spirit of international solidarity that A, those guilty or responsible, whatever the nationality, are sought out, handed over to justice and judged, and B, that the sentences pronounced are carried out. Ukraine, Europe, and the world need that type of justice now. And it can be started in London again, because we know that justice is one of the benchmarks of the British way of life. You have got a powerful experience of the international law and defending the values of humanism. That's why we are addressing Britain. We are fighting for justice. But justice, like victory, is not possible without allies. The president of Ukraine has suggested our form and, and announced our formula of peace. Next day, Russia responded with hundreds of the missiles. But just like in 1942, the replies of Nazis did not matter. We have to understand that together, we can do it with you. Unfortunately, the International Criminal Court, which we actively work with, does not have the legal force and 
they can't enforce the punishment against the primary crime of those who started the war. We need to start the special tribunal against the crime of aggression of Russia against, against Ukraine, which will enhance the work of the ICC and not weaken it. We need it to punish those who are politically and militarily responsible for the crime of war and terror. This is the seventh point of our formula of peace, and I hope and believe that Britain can become the leader of its implementation. To support this special tribunal, we have pre prepared the, dra the, the, the draft resolution, and this draft resolution of the General Assembly of UN should become the political foundation of the international efforts to punish the aggression. And li I would like to address you, Britain, and you, ladies and gentlemen, with a request. We need to unite the world community, just as it happened in January 1942, uh, to support the special tribunal against the aggression of Russia against Ukraine. I'm asking you a small favor to become the world leader in the justice efforts. This justice is not just needed for Ukraine. We need it so that the world could lead, could lead its life not by the rule of force, as the aggressor wants, but following the values of humanism. We need the justice so that the world could survive. At the moment, we can see terror online. It's obvious. We can see it live with mass documented evidence of crimes. It's easier to find the proof. It's obvious now. And I believe that London can give this impetus, decisive impetus, so that the world can become better, fairer world, thanks to you. First Lady Zelenska, thank you for being with us today. And as you can see from the response in the room, I speak for the whole room when I say that I speak for the whole room. 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 Вони абсолютно неприйнятні. Насильство, включаючи сексуальне насильство проти жінок і дівчат у конфлікті. Yet we know its lasting impact on survivors, their families, and indeed whole communities is devastating. It is felt not only by the current generations but those to come for many years. In highlighting this today, you are inspiring and helping us to raise awareness, not only among the parliamentarians in the room, but with the people of the United Kingdom. 
The women of Ukraine have demonstrated immense bravery from those who have remained in your country, facing the fear and uncertainty that every day brings, to those who now find themselves in unfamiliar lands, far from husbands, fathers and brothers, with many family units separated and mothers keeping their children safe and trying to help them to adjust to what no child should ever have to do. The bravery, stoicism and resilience shown by the Ukrainian people, especially as your country heads into a bitter winter and facing an energy crisis, is truly humbling and inspiring. President Zelenska, a true leader in his daily addresses to the Ukrainian people, demonstrating his continued and determined efforts, as well as his absolute conviction that Ukraine will be free, is an example to the whole world. First, Lady Zelenska, before this war, you had said that you were comfortable to be in the background, to fully support your husband as president, but not by taking on a major public role. In your own words, you were nervous of making big speeches. And yet, here you are today, and there you were in the US Congress in July, and there you will be on another global stage, on another day, doing a job you never wanted and expected, but you are doing that for Ukraine. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. That First Lady demonstrates resilience and courage. To quote President Roosevelt, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is more important than fear, and you are demonstrating that. Please assure the Ukrainian people that we see you as our neighbours, and as such, we stand in solidarity with you as you continue this fight. We wish you, President Zelensky, your family, and all the Ukrainian people continued strength, fortitude, and successes. And you can be assured in going back to Ukraine that the message is that we are your friends, united with you in that fight for justice. Thank you for your attendance today. We are all humbled by it.